Michael Carneal is an infamous name, and we know his name because back in 97, at 14 years old, he did something so terrible, so outside the norm, so despicable that his name stuck with us. He shot up his school. Three kids died, five were badly hurt. And I know what you're thinking, this happens all the time, but back then it did not. He was an outlier. He got life, no chance for parole for 25 years, and his number is up. He has a chance at getting out, which is not something that's easy to process for Missy Jenkins Smith. She took a bullet to the chest that fateful day, and she's been paralyzed ever since. And today, she's a public speaker and the author of two books, Choose to be Happy and Lessons from a School Shooting Survivor. And while Missy will never walk again, Michael Carneal is getting a shot at walking free. And she joins me now in a News Nation TV exclusive. Missy, thanks so much for, um, for being with me. I always wonder what it's like for somebody who's just had so much taken from them to hear that um, the, the killer who nearly killed them uh, may end up joining the rest of us out here, the, the ranks of the free. I know it, it is hard because there are um, victims that are having to deal with the consequences and don't have parole. And the person that forced this future on us of, of our fate, of what, what our rest of our lives are gonna be like, is getting a chance that we'll, we will never get for sentence for life. And I think it's just a little frustrating because I don't want others to get the, get the idea that there's no, you know, that there's, there's consequences, but they're not gonna stick forever. He could potentially still have some kind of life. I mean, he's 39. Um, he could have another 30 or 40 years. And that's something that three girls, people I knew that only had one decade of life, isn't gonna get. And they don't get parole. And I don't, I don't either. And the, there's so many victims. I've learned that besides there being eight people physically injured, there were so many people scarred that day, even if they were in a surrounding community. That sense of, of innocence was taken away, thinking that you know, you go to school without having to worry about someone hurting you. You've lived like a little less than three quarters of your life um, paralyzed because of what he did to you. Thank God you lived. I thank God we're talking. Yes. But you also have two children yourself. You were 15, a sophomore, when you were shot by him. And you have a 15-year-old as well as a 12-year-old. And I cannot imagine... What do you tell them about these active shooter drills that they go through in school? What do they know about your horror? Well, um, I try to share my story with, with them so that they know how important it is to look for the signs of, of school violence, that it's, it's not, you don't live in fear, but at the same time, you need to be able to not act as if it's not going to happen. I think there's too many people that, that have, I guess the way to, uh, they try to cope by saying, oh, it's not gonna happen here, we're gonna be fine, we're okay. And I, you know, that's something that you can't, you can't do, you can't live in fear, but you also can't not look at the signs of what um, a school shooting you know, could, could be. Um, you know, Michael, before this happened, he told people something big was gonna happen. He even brought the gun to school two weeks before it happened and um, people who saw it didn't say anything. So there's, there's things that can be done if we just not, if we can't just sit and just say, oh, it's not going to happen to us, you know, you have to look at those signs. I have just, you know, uh, 40 seconds left, but I, I need to ask if you're going to be in court, if you have any chance to be um, heard and, and if your voice uh, matters in this process of this, um, of this parole process. I do. Um, I'm going to be able to, to speak. Um, I think every um, victim is allowed 10 minutes, but I really think it's important for us to um, look at his ability to be responsible for himself after this many years. I mean, he's been taken care of since he was 14 um, in, in the prison. And so for him to get out at 39 and to be able to take care of himself and even the stressors of, of the world now, you know, he said that mental illness is what caused him to do what he did. He's taking medication for that, but he's going to be responsible to take care of himself. And I can't imagine the stress of what that can do to a person if he's doing it on his own. I, there's going to, um, you know, the victims are going to have a hard time dealing with the fact that he's not, you know, not serving consequences anymore. But it's scary to know that there's a what if, you know, that he I want to talk to you again. 
I would love mm -hmm. to, to have you back again when that um, when that comes up. It's not long, not long from now. So let's let's meet it's again, not. Missy, and let's um, let's go through this and see what happens. Thank exactly. you so much for a for being with us. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we can talk. Thank you. Um, and and God bless you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.